This is Mark Brandt, your Organic Chemistry Instructor. The purpose of this video is to show you how to run the 90 MHz NMR. First, a word of warning. NMR instruments have strong magnetic fields. Anyone with a cardiac pacemaker should stay out of the NMR room. This is the magnet container for our higher field instrument, the 300 MHz NMR. This instrument contains liquid helium to create the conditions necessary for superconductivity. Please do not bump into the instrument. This is the 90 MHz NMR. It has a permanent magnet and therefore does not need cryogenic liquids. The method for preparing the sample for NMR depends upon the type of sample. I have a solid sample on this petri dish. To run NMR, the sample must be in an NMR tube, which is essentially a long, narrow tube. The NMR tubes are made to high tolerances because they have to spin at 1200 RPM. In consequence, they are fairly expensive. They cost about $5 a piece, so please be careful with them. Place about half a centimeter of sample into the NMR tube. For solid samples, the simplest method to do this is to press the open end of the tube against some of the sample and then gently tap the tube to encourage the sample to drop to the bottom of the tube. Next, add about a milliliter of deuterated solvent to the sample. We have several deuterated solvents available but we use deuterated chloroform most frequently. When running an unknown sample, test the solubility of the compound in the normal solvent first before using the more expensive deuterated version. If the sample is not soluble in chloroform, you might be able to use deuterated acetone, deuterated DMSO, or deuterated water. However, all of these solvents result in somewhat greater problems with interpreting the spectral data. Here, I'm showing the use of the deuterated chloroform from our solvent stock bottle. After you've added enough of the solvent, you need to make sure that all of your sample is dissolved in the solvent before you carry on to the next step. The internal standard we will use is TMS, tetramethylsilane. Add a single drop of TMS. Adding too much will distort your data. Place a cap on the tube and vortex again. If you have a liquid sample, the procedure is similar except that you should use a pipette to place the sample into the NMR tube. Next, go to the NMR and open the sample chamber. The sample eject button is on the right side of the chamber. If a sample is in the instrument, eject it. Be ready to catch the ejecting sample. Insert your NMR tube into the white Teflon spinner. Use the gray template to ensure correct positioning of the tube in the spinner. Once it's positioned, wipe the NMR tube and the spinner off with a chem wipe and then insert your sample into the instrument. Use the switch in the front of the sample chamber to turn off the compressed air and then turn it back on again. Look at the NMR tube to make sure that it is spinning. The tube is not spinning, turn the air off and then on again until the sample does spin and then close the sample chamber. Go to the computer and switch to the Win PNMR software used to collect data. You should see the H1 and a prompt at the bottom left of the blue window. Type shim and press enter. Type 5 for the relaxation delay and press enter again. The shimming process will take a minute or two as the instrument optimizes the homogeneity of the magnetic field through your sample. When the shimming is complete, type ZG and press enter to collect data. The program will ask for a file name. Type a reasonable file name and save the file in an appropriate folder. The data collection process will take a few seconds after you've clicked on the save button. The NUTS software is used for data analysis. I will go over a few simple aspects of using this software package. Hold down the control key and press the F2 key. The program will then ask for the file to use. Open the file that you saved. Enter the sample name and solvent information in the dialog and put your name in the user field and then click OK. Type AP to autophase the spectrum. Type BC to correct the baseline. Type ID to enter the integration routine. Click once to get a vertical cursor. Click again on the left and then to the right of each peak. 
is usually not worth integrating the TMS peak. To set the base value for the integrals, click once to get a cursor, place without clicking the cursor on a peak that you can identify as corresponding to a specific number of protons, type the letter V, and then type the number of protons for that peak. Here, the peak is a methyl group, so I entered the number 3. Press Enter to leave the integration routine. Hold down the control key and press I to display the integrals. Type DP to pick the peaks. Click on each peak for which you would like to have the chemical shift value. I suggest including the TMS peak so that you can be sure that this peak is actually at zero parts per million. Press Enter to leave the peak picking routine. Hold down the control key and press P to display the peak PPM values. You may wish to change the font size for the display. This can be done by selecting Set Fonts in the Edit menu and then choosing the specific types of display fonts that you wish to change. Next, double click on the screen to invoke the zoom routine. Drag across the part of the spectrum that contains peaks and then right click to zoom to this part of the spectrum. When your spectrum looks the way that you want it, you should print it. Select Print in the File menu, choose Landscape if it is not already selected, and print to the Crapo 3 printer. The last step is cleanup. Take your NMR tube out of the instrument and carefully place the spinner on top of the instrument. Go to the NMR tube wash station, which is on the east wall of the research laboratory. Remove the top of the NMR tube and place it on the bottom of the tube. Now, carefully place the open end of the NMR tube in the NMR tube washer, turn on the vacuum water, and use methanol to rinse out the NMR tube. The vacuum should force the methanol up into the entirety of the tube. Leave the tube on the washer for a few seconds to remove the bulk of the methanol. Next, take the NMR tube out of the NMR tube washer, take the top off, Turn off the vacuum water and carefully put the NMR tube in the tray in the drying oven. Thank you for your attention.